Hi, I'm Richard from Original Outdoors and I'm here with Doug from Heartwood Treen Woodworking. So today we're going to be making something. What are we making? Uh, first off today I think we're going to have a go at a spatula. Spatulas, so we'll I learn love spatulas. Some basic techniques for green woodworking. We'll be splitting, cleaving, shaving and then a little bit of carving at the end. Okay, so what kind of tools do people need for this? Um, at its simplest level, all you really need is an axe and a knife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to introduce some other techniques here that make things quicker and easier. But really, to make a spoon or a spatula or something like that, you need a knife, an axe, maybe a saw, but a normal woodworking saw is all you need for that. So would you say this is a good beginner's uh, project? Great beginner's project, something that's really simple to do, really straightforward, and uses lots of the basic techniques so you get to practice everything and still make something at the end of it. Okay, let's get started. Cool. So Doug, what's first? Okay, so first of all we've got a piece of birch, which is a nice soft easy wood to carve, mm -hmm. and we're going to split it in half. So to do that we're going to use a mallet and a tool called a fro. Now you could just use an axe for this, but we'll use the fro because it gives us a nice clean split right across the middle of the wood. Now what you do when you split is you're looking for the centre of the wood, the pith, the really soft bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. And there is where we want our splits to start and we'll always try and split our wood into two halves. So we'll put it through the pith and into two reasonably even halves. So all we're going to do is tap the blade into the wood until things start to give. Feel that start to give now. And we can just twist the blade to make things come apart. So the depth of the blade of the fro gives you that levering action as well as well the handle? Yeah, the fact that the, the handle's at 90 degrees to mm. the handle, the blade is at 90 degrees to the handle, gives you the ability to lever, mm -hmm. whereas with an axe you don't have the ability to do that. Okay, so we're going to get you through the middle again. So this is quartering it down now? Quartering it down, yeah. So what we're going to try and do is, the pith's almost in the middle, but the piece of wood isn't perfectly round. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we'll just make it, we put that in the middle of the piece of wood there and we just make it slightly offset like that. So the two halves are the same size. Now the idea of that is that because the two halves are the same size, they both bend an equal amount. Right, that means okay. that the split will run straight. Mm -hmm. If we start setting off to one side, the thinner piece bends more Mm -hmm. Because it bends more, it breaks yep. more of the fibres, and because more of the fibres break, it gets thinner. And it's a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy then that it keeps on running further and further out. So this is the thing that a piece of wood is just a bundle of fibres? It is. It's yeah. effectively like a big pile of straws. Very small straws, but straws all the same. And those straws are what holds the wood and keeps it green. Okay, so... Okay. There we go. So now we're down to a quarter and we'll move over to using the axe. So now we've split it down to a quarter, mm -hmm. we need to split in half again to make everything run true again. But obviously a quarter, if I split along the radius, yep. the pieces I'm going to get are going to get smaller and mm -hmm. smaller. So whilst I'll still have to remove the pith, in fact the pith has come out of this piece, that's not going to be a problem. Um, so I want to keep this width to make as many good size spatulas so as I can. To, so I'm trying, trying to, make... to maintain that width as long as I can. So I'm going to break off the back half now. So it's slices of bread rather than pieces of cake? Yeah. So to do that I need the two pieces to be approximately the same size. Mm -hmm. But equally that means that this, this width has got to be bigger than this width. Yeah. Because it's the volume or the surface area of the wood that counts. So you think about so the, if, if you weighed the two pieces afterwards they should weigh about the same. That's the idea, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try about there. So got a nice piece here, a big knot in there unfortunately, but we'll see when we split it again whether that disappears. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go again, maintaining our width again. 
then we're going to go in half again. So this time they're going to be much closer to a straight forward, straight down the middle, because they're much, it's much closer. Aha, so a knot. Because we've hit a knot, mm -hmm. we've run out to the side because the grain rises to meet the knot. Yeah, I see. Okay. So the split hasn't quite worked that time. So I'll have to use the axe now to try and trim away some of that extra and get down to our flat blank. So I notice you're doing a couple of bits of good axe craft there. You're keeping your thumb and anything you don't want to be cut well away from the cutting area. You're using a stop block, you're using a block rather than holding it in mid-air. Absolutely, and the other really good one is to twist your body to the side. Yeah. And the easiest way to do that is to move your right leg back. Mm -hmm. So you're stood almost like you're doing a lunge. Yeah. But by doing that, you bring, as you twist your body in to make the cut again, you bring your right arm outside your body. Yep, I see that. So we've got all these things here stopping us. We've got a nice block that's reasonably high, it's not too low, so you're not going to miss the edge of the block. But it also means that that leg that's in danger is being moved right back out of the way, so you'll never hit it. So it's that general rule of working with sharp tools that you always want to think about, if it doesn't end up where you wanted it to end up, where is it going to where end up? Where is it going to stop? That's, that's always the worry. Yeah. If that stopping point is your body or someone else's, then you need to change your technique or your position. Absolutely. Um, so we've now got reasonably flat plank. We've got a knot in it here, which isn't great, but I think if we draw our spatula on, yeah. we'll probably lose that knot as well. So that's part of the property of that unique piece of wood, I suppose. It is, yeah. It's one of the things, wondrous things about green woodworking is each time you do it, everyone's different mm. because each piece of wood is just subtly different. It's like sculpture. The, the spatula is already there. You've just got to take away everything that's not a spatula. Yeah, that's the theory anyway. <laughs> So, Doug, what are you sat on? Okay, so this tool is called a shave horse, and all it is is a bench for gripping a piece of wood when you cut it. Mm. Now, the wondrous thing about a shave horse is it's the one time you're going to do that thing that you never ever do, which is cut towards yourself. Um, there are a lot, in fact, there are lots of different times when you can cut yeah. towards yourself. It's about making cutting towards yourself safe. And in this case, we use something called a draw knife which is a long straightish blade on a pair of handles that point towards you. And what you do is you put it against the wood and you push with your feet. Mm -hmm. Now the pushing with your feet makes this clamp up and then you pull the blade towards you to take off these nice thin shavings. And they really are beautiful thin shavings. You could write on those with paper, you, couldn't you? I, I know people that make their business cards that way. <laughs> um, now, the reason this is safe mm -hmm. is because you keep your elbows in. If you keep your elbows in, as you pull your hands towards yourself, mm -hmm. they naturally stop if you keep your elbows yeah. in. And they stop before they get to your body. So you can't actually cut yourself if you keep your elbows in. Mm -hmm. If you put your elbows out like a chicken, you can go all the way. You can put your hands all the way behind you. Right. Okay. So the trick with a shave horse is elbows in. Keep your elbows in, and there's just no way that you can actually bring it close enough to yourself to cut yourself. Now, the disadvantage with a piece of work like this is you can only shave this end. Mm -hmm. So we'll spin it around and we'll shave this end as well. Just to make sure it's nice and flat where we're gonna draw our spatula on that we're gonna cut out. So all these shavings are about a third of a millimeter thick or thereabouts? It depends, okay. some of them can be really, That's really fine. Thing, yeah. They can, um, but others can be quite thick chunks. You can take off quite large pieces with this. It's quite thick pieces of wood in some cases. Um, by the piece that's by just determined by the angle of the blade, mm -hmm. how you hold it, 
and how much effort you're putting in as well. Mm. Obviously, if you're cutting a big, thick piece off, it's much harder to cut than a thin piece. And if people were in the woods or didn't have a shave horse with them, what could they do? Um, there's lots of different things you can do. If you've got a method of gripping the wood, but you don't have the draw knife, mm -hmm. you can take a standard straight knife and put it into a stick and use it a little bit like a draw knife. Um, so you pass one of the quarters, what the, no, the extras off the end, the very end, the, one of those. Yeah. So what you can do is you can put your knife into a piece of wood and then if you've got the ability to grip, you can then use that, I see, like a shaving knife. So it's like, not, it, like a, a draw knife. Not quite as efficient, but it's still safe. It's not, it's not as efficient. Space. Um, if you use the correct grips, it's probably no different. Mm -hmm. But it is another method, it's another technique that you can use mm. to do these things. And they're always worth, it's always worth picking another technique and getting another technique under your belt. So what we really need to do now is just finish off the shaving on this spatula. So at this end, we're quite thick, left good thickness, so we can make a nice handle. Mm -hmm. At this end, we're getting a bit thinner, and that will make a really nice shallow end to our spatula. So we'll just finish off now. You can see the advantages now of using the shape horse and the draw knife, in that the amount of material that you can remove, wow, really quickly it's enormous tinder as well uh, it will be when it's dry right. <laughs> um, at the moment we're working with green fresh timber and because we're working with green wood that makes the wood not only softer and easier to carve um, but it also makes it um, very difficult to set fire to okay so now we've got thick end and a thin end and we're going to do some carving and we'll do some drawing on it first and then we'll do some carving to make our spatula. Brilliant. So I've disappeared off camera to give people room to do this. Okay. So what's this? So I like to encourage people when they're carving, particularly when they're starting out, to draw what you're going to carve and then carve to the line. Mm -hmm. It's all very well to kind of go with the flow and go with the, um, the shape of the piece of wood. But what we're really trying to do is we're trying to say, I want the, the, the biggest, the best, the, the sweetest, the, the nicest spatula I can get out of this piece of wood. And if you think about that now, when you've got the flat piece of wood and you draw it, before you start kind of whittling away, you get something close to what you're after. If you start with a big piece of wood and start out making a ladle, mm -hmm. but you end up with a teaspoon, you haven't really achieved your aim. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and give ourselves a pattern or a plan and we don't have to stick exactly to it but if we stick somewhere close to it we'll get something good from it. I like my spatulas to have a bit of an angle across the face so that when you're scraping a pan you can do something like that. It's a bit more comfortable to hold something that's at an angle. A little bit of a curve on all the corners just because curves don't tend to split so much. Have a nice flowing shape back into the handle and we'll avoid that nasty knot. Um, so if I can just come back this side now and see if I can kind of replicate that curve. Oh, that's not so good. And as I come down here, I don't want to get too close to the edge because we've got to remove this thick piece of bark on the side. Now that's curving back in that way, so if I go too close to the edge, I won't get rid of it all. So that looks quite nice at the moment. And we'll come back up here, maybe get the handle a little bit wider as we go up. And incidentally, if you're working on green wood, these copy pencils or ink pencils are really good. Normal pencil doesn't write very well on green wood, whereas these copy pencils, they're actually, they're ink, and it does come off on your hands a bit, but they're much, much better um, 
being able to draw something onto something wet. There you go, we don't quite like that. There's a bit of a lumpy bumpy feel there. Try and get rid of that. But that looks like a nice spatula. So we've drawn out our shape, we've moved back to the chopping block. What's next? Um, first job, quick tidy up. Right. Even these tiny little pieces of wood that are floating around are big enough to turn your ankle. So let's get them out of the way. We're going to move around the block a little bit to do this. Okay. Um, so just making sure that your area is clear and that nobody or nothing is in the way. This is the thing about the blood circle as well. Yeah, it's the, 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 the axe lengths or your blood bubble or yeah. your area How? within which that you should and could work mm. and anybody coming into that circle becoming kind of your responsibility yeah. in the fact that it's you are the one that has to stop, you're the one that has to make sure that that person stays safe. So we're going to make a start on carving out our axe now and we've got our simple shape and before we start the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trim across the end grain mm -hmm. with a saw okay. okay and the reason for doing that with a saw is that when you uh, cut along the grain or with the grain it's really easy to cut nicely with an axe or a knife because you're slicing mm -hmm. kind of just gently yeah. across the grain but with it mm. when you go all the way across the grain like we're about to here it's quite difficult to take big chunks off with a knife or axe without splitting it, particularly when it's a thin section like this. So I'm just going to grab, an axe, uh, grab a saw and we'll do that. We'll cut in a bit with the saw here. So all we're going to do is we're going to get close to the line. next okay so we've got our basic spatula shape now and we're going to move over to a little bit of knife work mm -hmm. now I've got a number of ways of cutting that aren't necessarily the conventional down and away from your body mm -hmm. okay but the point to make here is that when I'm carving I'm always carving in such a way that the blade shouldn't come into contact with me Okay, so when I am cutting towards me, which you will see in a minute, um, I'm going to be doing it in such a way that it's not dangerous, and I'll explain that when I've got the knife in my hand. Okay, so I'm going to use a little straight, straightforward carving blade here. Nothing fancy about this. This is actually one that was made by a friend of mine, and we've got a little birch bark sheath here, and if we've got time, we'll do another quick video on how to make those. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to carve that way, Richard. I'm going to go stand over there. <laughs> so the first thing to do is carving away from your body, just tidying up the edges and making them nice and smooth. I'm going to go the same this side. So this is one of those points where you really appreciate how valuable a sharp tool is. Oh, you can't um, underestimate. Right, okay. This is the cut that I use that comes towards me a lot. Mm -hmm. Now there's two things going on here. The first thing is I've joined my hands together mm -hmm. and I'm using my underneath hand to push. Okay, so, so at, at, at the extent of my fingers pushing, yeah. that's as far as that cut goes, mm -hmm. so I can't hurt myself. The other thing I'm doing is I'm angling the work so that the butt of the knife is coming towards me. Yeah. So there's two fail safes in there that means I shouldn't cut myself. So even though theoretically that cutting edge is coming towards you, it's, it is. there shouldn't be a way it should come in contact with your flesh. Absolutely not. Mm. 
Okay. So now we're going to come around the other side yeah. and do the other side. Now, obviously, I'm right-handed, so mm -hmm. that's fairly straightforward for me. You can come into the gap and push with the heel of your palm and come round slowly and gently like that. I find that quite hard. That's less controlled. So I, well, I find it less controlled. So what I tend to do is I tend to change grips and I'm using my shoulders now. You can see my arms going in and out to make a nice controlled cut. And the reason my arms are moving backwards and forwards like a chicken so this one's either called the chest lever or often called chicken wings. I like chicken wings, that's a good name. Um, and the reason that works is you're using the big muscles in your back to make the cut rather than the little muscle in your arm. So we're quite tidy there, we'll have a little bit of a trim there. And we'll come back and do these corners at the end because we don't want to break them off if we can avoid it. Okay, so. see the butt of the knife is hitting me before the blade comes even close. So what's now? Okay, so now we've got the, the rough outline mostly carved, we should probably explain something quickly first. So the first thing we did is we carved it into that dimension. We got it flat mm -hmm. and we got a thicker handle and a thinner spade at Just the end for scraping, for scraping and for getting underneath your food. Yeah. So a good point in the spatula is to be able to slide it underneath your food. Otherwise it's a block of wood. Exactly. Um, the second thing we did was we marked it out and we carved it in that dimension. So now we've got most of the outside of the shape and we're just going to trim the corners to make everything a little bit sweeter and a little bit tidier and then the last job is to go back and take away all these sharp corners mm -hmm. now we might want to just take corners off or we might want to go around and round it really nicely um, and there's loads of different techniques for doing that um, but I think to be honest if you want to learn all of those you'd have to come on a course who runs a course on green woodworking? Well, as of October. <laughs> it's all the time I'm closing my hand now. I'm not actually pulling or pushing my thumb into the blade. I'm closing my hand to make those nice little fine cuts. And then constantly moving my thumb around, trying to keep it as out of the way as possible. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make the angle at the end a little bit steeper just to make it nice and thin at the edge so that we can slide it under stuff but without kind of weakening the whole thing too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a strip about a centimetre wide or so and I'm just going to carve that centimetre, that last centimetre down and make a nice even. How am I going to do this? There we go, that's a nice way of doing it. Keep twisting around the thumb using it as a lever. Coming right to the edges. Now, so that gives us a nice shallow strip. We really, really all we need to do now is just gently peel away all the corners.
unfortunately it's almost kind of a slow meditative bit this. And the fact that you're kind of coming around just gently trying to make everything match and be even or as much as you can. So what we're doing now is we're just kind of making the handle slightly more octagonal rather than just having rounded corners. That's something I quite like to do with a lot of my things like this. Just try and even that up now. So really what I'm doing now is I'm just going around looking at it and saying, well, where are my bits that I'm not happy with? So there's a little furry bit here. Let's take that away. A little furry bit there. And just where the little raised edges are. But I think, other than maybe a little hole in the end here, that's pretty much there. Okay, so finishing touches. And a nail on there. A little twist drill, and we're just gonna drill a hole. There we go. And we'll tidy up. So to tidy up. All we're going to do is push. So there we have it. What in about 25 minutes of actual work, if that, we've got down to from a log to a useful kitchen implement. That's it. That's pretty amazing, really. And it's got such a lovely finish. No sanding or anything on that. No, really, if you've got sharp tools and you're using them properly, you shouldn't need to sand any mm -hmm. of your work once it's finished. Perfect. Nice big size as well. We've got a really big black cast frying pan that's a perfect size for that just getting into the corners so Doug thank you very much thank you of course there was that one Ray Mears episode with uh, Ray Goodwin where he makes the uh, canoe paddle and they do the joke the next morning that he only made a spatula so yeah Ray if you want a new canoe paddle there's one here <laughs>